Hey guys, Lou Wizard here with another Soul Forge video on Gems of War. It is Monday, so we have new uh, troop here out, and we have new event going on, as well as new things in the Soul Forge. So let's go ahead and take a look, as always, uh, at the weapons here in the Soul Forge. See if there's anything good. Uh, there's a doomed weapon called the Doomed Scripture. I don't really like this doomed weapon too much. It does scatter damage, so I would not recommend spending the 900 diamonds on it unless you're late in the game and you're trying, trying to collect all the doomed weapons. Uh, Divine Protector, however, is a really good weapon. Now, this one, um, uh, you know, it's kind of like all those other weapons that you'll see that generate mana based on specific allies in your team. But this one's a really good one, and for a couple of reasons. One, there's really good divine troops, and this is uh, a, a weapon that will generate uh, a mix of six red and yellow gems for each divine ally. So you got some good mana generation, as well as if you upgrade this weapon, you will get a barrier on the weapon every time you cast it, which is very... It's a barrier is one of the good defense uh, things that you can have on any kind of weapon when you cast it. So uh, that's really good about this one. And like I said, there's some really good divine allies. So uh, that one I do recommend picking up. It's only 300 diamonds, not too expensive there. So if you do have the diamonds to spare, I would say go ahead and get the divine protector. Now, Guardian Hammer, uh, it's another one of those types of weapons. But I would say skip that. Fist of Heaven. Uh, explode 32 yellow gems. Grant a random status effect to all divine allies. Then summon a divine troop. Now this one is a really good one actually. And if you don't have it. I already own one of this. Uh, and it's, it's pretty good. Because it's going to explode uh, yellow gems. And then it will grant a status effect to all divine allies. And then it has a chance to summon. An, uh, not a chance. But then it will summon a divine troop if you have an available spot open on your team. Uh, but yeah, if you're into making divine uh, teams here, this weapon is pretty good for that as well. It's only 300 diamonds, so it's not bad either. But I would say Divine Protector is probably the better one over the Fist of Heaven. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I find myself using the Divine Protector more, but is it better than Fist of Heaven? That I'm not sure. I just find myself using the Divine Protector more. So, anyway. Uh, moving on to troops here. Let's go through the summoning stones really quick. I like to see if there's anything in here that's uh, pretty good that's worth trying to get. Uh, and if you already have some of these troops, sometimes it's good to get multiple copies so that you can get it up to an Ascended Mythic. And I don't see anything yet that's really interesting. And now it looks like uh, this week, uh, I'm not going to recommend trying to go for anything in the Summoning Stones. It all looks pretty good. Um, yeah, nothing really there worth getting. So let's move on to Legendaries and Mythic Troops. So for Legendaries, we have Scion, and we have Willow, we have Divinia, and then we have Starflower. So out of these, I would say uh, Divinia is... is it, Divinia is among... Uh, the few legendary troops that I would consider recommending f for you to craft. Like the 800 diamonds. I usually don't recommend crafting legendaries, but there's a handful of them that I will say yes to. Like Divinia is uh, one of them on my list, and then there's uh, Gorgatha is one, and the Dragon Soul is another one. So those are three. And then, oh yeah, Yao is a fourth one. Um... I can't think of a fifth one, but there's those are definitely four legendary troops. Now, Divinia is a really, really good mana generator and support troop for a couple of reasons here. One, it will explode all red gems, and this is great even at lower levels because it's not based on uh, your current magic. So, for example, some other troops will say explode, and it'll have a number here like that's in this purple-pink color. That means that it's based on your magic. So if you're a lower level player, you're not going to explode as many gems. Now, however, with Divinia, it doesn't matter how high you are, what level you are, and how much magic you have. You're going to explode all red gems. So this can be a really, really good mana generator for your team at early levels, even at, even at higher levels. 
But it's only a 15 mana cost. It is a Divine Troop. And if you do have the Divine Ishbala Legendary Troop, you can get it to start with uh, 40% mana. It's a red-yellow color. It also is immune to Mana Burn, Mana Drain, and Mana Steal. And on 4 or 5 gem matches, it will cause a random uh, status effect on an ally. So that's really good as well because uh, random positive uh, status effects can be Barrier. They can be Enchant. Uh, that can be a blast. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff there that it could do. Um, now, back to its ability. Besides exploding all red gems, it's going to cleanse all allies as well as give them life. So you're increasing the life of all your allies and you're also cleansing them. Uh, and so cleanse is one of the really, really good support functions in the game. Because, for example, if you have a skull damage team and the top troop or hero that you have gets entangled... You're not going to be doing uh, any skull damage. So, but this, if you have Divinia in the team, and when you cast it, it'll cleanse that off, and you can start doing that uh, damage. So, Divinia is one of the ones I will recommend as a legendary that if you don't have it, craft it. Uh, it's that good, in my opinion, uh, as a support troop and a mana generator. Uh, so moving on probably Starflower. Uh, Starflower is pretty good. It does damage to all enemies boosted by ally and enemy Fey. It summons a random Fey and there's a 20% chance to transform a random enemy to a pixie. The other thing that's really good about Starflower is that if you have it fully traded, there's a 50% chance to fairy fire a random enemy at the start of your turn. So every time your turn happens, there's a 50% chance for a random enemy to get fairy fired. And Fairy Fire will allow the enemy troop to take an extra 50% damage from spells. So that's pretty cool. Now, uh, so this is a legendary troop. It is Wild Folk. And Wild Folk here are pretty awesome uh, troop types. A lot of good ones. So this one's pretty good as a legendary. So I would say Divinia is number one uh, on the legendary list here this week. And then Starflower is going to be two for me. Willow would be three, and Scion would be a last at four. I don't really like Scion too much. It's, it mostly uh, does just mana draining. It does a little true scatter damage, but it's uh, more annoying than it is dangerous, I think. But Divinia is definitely uh, going to be a recommended craft if you don't have it this week, uh, in my opinion. So moving on to the uh, Mythic Troops. Uh, we already see a few of them here. We have Abysnia, which is abysmal. It's not really that good. Uh, it, it explodes all gems of a chosen color and summons an infernal king. That's basically all it does. And it is a 22 mana cost. So uh, it's pretty awful because you can have something like Ragnagord, which will explode all gems of a chosen color just like this does. It just doesn't have the summon. And you can even get that troop to start at, I believe, 50% mana because it has something in its traits with that. Uh, so I believe you can have it start with like 7 mana, uh, which is way cheaper than this 22. So even though I have, I think I might have like 2 or 3 copies of, Bis of Abysnia, but uh, I never use it, like ever, just because uh, it's just not not that good. Um, so that's kind of at the <laughs> at the bottom of the Mythics this, this week. Um, then we have the Queen of Sin, which the Queen of Sin uh, on... You know, it kind of looks like it would be a decent uh, mythic troop, but I just don't really use it that often. It deals true damage to the first two enemies, and then it summons Wrath or Lust, and then it blesses all demon allies. Um, and its last trait says it will uh, cause enemies to lose four from a random skill point when an ally casts a spell. Uh, it's not really that reliable because, again, there's uh, four different uh, like skills that any troop has, and it's gonna they're gonna lose only four from a random one of those. So it's and that that's not really that great in my opinion. Um, but true damage is always really good, so it's dealing true damage to the first two enemies. It summons Wrath or Lust. Now Wrath is a really good legendary troop, so that is really good. And this is only a 20 mana cost. Like I said, it seems like this should be a pretty good troop, but uh, I just don't use it that often. Um, even though I have it, well, I have two copies of it, but I uh, don't use that one too often. Chamber of Guard is one of the the best mana generating defensive troops in the game. It's uh, I believe they even lowered the mana cost on this. Uh, it's now 20 mana cost. It's a human. Uh, which he, there is a legendary troop 
St. Ostra, which will allow humans to start with 50% mana. It's also a knight, and there is a knight legendary that allows uh, uh, um, knights to start with 50% mana. So you have some options there to start this guy at 10 mana instead of 20. And traits are amazing. That's why I said it's one of the best uh, support um, and defensive troops in the game. It reduces damage from spells by 50%, reduces damage from skulls by 60 and then all red allies gain one to all stats at the start of each turn. So it does use red, so it will be giving itself one to all stats each turn. But it's really great if you put in, like, uh, if you have a red weapon for your hero, or you have other couple other troops that use red, you put it in with this one. Like, their, their spell damage is going to, uh, their spell and attack damage, and their armor, and their life, all that's going to be increased by one every single turn. And you might not think that that's too much of a big deal, but after, like, five or ten turns, you're doing an extra five or ten uh, spell damage. Uh, so it can be significant. Then for its ability, it gains armor and a lot of it. And then if there's 13 or more skulls on the board, it, it gains double that armor. So that's a lot. Then it creates a mix of 22 blue and red gems. Now it does take red color, so it is generating some mana for itself. And that blue can go to whatever uh, troop that you do have uh, in the team. But that's one of the greatest uh, uh, um, defensive and mana generating troops in the game. It's really good. Uh, Aquaticus is also really, really good. I like it. Um, I kind of like this troop better than Infernus. Infernus was kind of like my number one to go to for doing splash damage and exploding a few gems on the board. But Aquaticus, in my opinion, is just it's better at it, uh, especially if you use an Ice Storm. Now, uh, Aquaticus is... Uh, it does 36 light splash damage to three random enemies, then explodes half the blue gems on the board. So a little bit of that's a little tricky, but that's why I said it works great with an Ice Storm because an Ice Storm is going to guarantee a lot more blue gems falling down on the board, which means that every time you cast this troop, it's going to explode more gems on the board, which is going to generate more mana, which will allow this troop to fill up more. It does use blue mana, so it will be generating mana for itself, which is uh, something that I always see as a big positive when it comes to uh, any kind of troops that, that have an explosion going on or... Uh, any kind of creating gems like if it's creating a color or doing some kind of mana generation for itself on top of doing damage I really like that uh, combination I, I, I give it more points in my head as far as the worth of that troop so but three random enemies are going to get hit with that splash damage and splash damage is going to get spread around between the troops so pretty much this guarantees that every uh, tr enemy troop is going to get hit with a little bit of damage then the other thing that's uh, really nice here in the traits, it will submerge all allies when matching four or more gems, and submerge dodges uh, the damage to all type. So if you have something like, uh, if the enemy has like a, Dawn a Dawnbringer, for example, and it's going to cast that and it does damage to all the enemy troops, if your enemy troops are all, sub or if your ally troops are all submerged, then when uh, that Dawnbringer or any kind of weapon that does that type of damage, it's going to dodge it all. Uh, so that's a really nice uh, defensive uh, capability here of Aquaticus. But like I said, I like to use it with a storm. So you have a couple of options. You can use the weapon Jar of Eyes, which creates an ice storm, or you could use um, Skady is another mythic troop that creates a uh, ice storm every single turn. And then you have a legendary troop from the underworld, uh, Lyraza, I believe it's called. Um, and that will create a, uh, I forget what kind of storm it's called. Is it a madness storm? I forget, but it's going to create a storm that's a combination of blue and purple. So that could be useful with this as well. Um, so those are the four mythic troops this week. And how I would rank them is obviously I think, uh, Aquaticus is probably going to be my number one pick this week to craft, uh, for mythics. And then I would say probably Champion of Guard, just because Queen of Sin is a little bit odd to me. Um, you know, like True Damage is good, Summoning Wrath is good. I just don't, I don't for whatever reason, I just don't think that it's, uh, <laughs> I don't use it enough. So, I don't know, maybe I'm missing out. But I'm going to go Aquaticus number one, Champion of Guard two, Queen of Sin three, and then uh, Abyssinia uh, in very last place there for Mythics to craft this week. Um, so, yeah, if you don't have Aquaticus, uh, I would consider trying to get it or crafting it this week. 
And so, yeah, that's it for the Soul Forge. Uh, I'm gonna grab my little uh, tribute here real quick. Now let's check out the new weekly troop. Uh, and his name is Quatramanis. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. He's got quite a, a big name there. But his spell is called Fist Barrage. It deals 33 light splash damage to an enemy and a random enemy. If the enemy is a construct, explode eight gems. I don't really like the end part there if the enemy is a construct. Because, like, how can you really, uh, you know, have a strategy with that? You just kind of have to get lucky and and hope the enemy has a construct in order to get that uh, the eight gems exploding. But 33 splash damage to an enemy and a random enemy. So there's two enemies that are going to get hit. That's not bad. Uh, it does reduce damage from spells by 30 or 25%. It reduces damage from spells by 50%. So yeah, it's uh, it's not a bad troop. Uh, not bad. And for 400 glory, we are getting two arcane skull trait stones this week. That's a good deal. Uh, so if you need those arcane trait stones... Uh, I would uh, go ahead and try to get a few of those with your glory this week. You can level up or uh, uh, trait your mythics and legendaries with that and even your classes that need it. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's go take a look at the current event that's going on. Uh, it's called Allies of Stone. And we're going to go here and see. I'm going to go in the shop and buy up uh, enough here so we can get our, uh, our metal. And then we'll go from there. We'll see if we can uh, build a team. I haven't even taken a look yet to see what the troop restrictions are. So uh, we'll see. I got, uh, I think I'll have a medal this time around. There we go. Medal of Kings. And it's got a little skull in the middle. So I'm kind of guessing right now based on that. I could be wrong. But I'm guessing that it's going to be skull damage. And it is. So 160% skull damage for all troops in the current event. So let's hope, let's hope that the uh, uh, troops for their restrictions can actually use skulls. Okay, so troop restrictions uh, are defenders and war masters. And the color needs to be purple. Uh, so let's hope that there is some skull troops that meet those uh, yeah we do already this is nice very nice i like this okay they're starting to they're starting to think about this a little bit then uh the wild queen queen is amazing steals attack from an enemy gives it to the first ally creates a mix of 22 skulls and green gems that's awesome we have elder father Transforms red gems to purple, yellow uh, to skulls. So there's yellow to skulls. Bone dragon eliminates armor, creates nine skulls. Uh, and then we have divine Ishbala here, which transforms red gems to skulls, green gems to yellow. Uh, we have Glaceon, transforms yellow gems to blue, transforms red gems to doom skulls. We got Infernal King. We've got Keeper of Souls, which is really great because we can choose which gem color to transform to skulls. Um... And we have Nimu, which also transforms uh, skulls. Uh, Sekma does as well. Aziris is in here, which is uh, probably going to be a, a real like sneaky MVP type of troop for this event. Because you can transform a selected mana gem into a skull. Which there's a lot of times where there's two skulls that are close to each other. And you can use Aziris and just get that, uh, get that uh, three match of a skull or even a four match or something and it's it's pretty awesome i like using it for stuff like this we have fist of zor and starts a full mana converts all yellow gems to skulls so that's uh that's awesome uh is there anything else here iron jaw destroys all skulls this here double the number of skulls on the board then create two skulls you got skeleros that could be useful and just looking real quick to see if there's anything else down here. Uh, create seven skulls. Uh, a skeleton here would be a good one for uh, for people that don't have a lot of these other legendaries or mythics. But yeah, we're I'm I'm pretty happy here. We got some good troops. This is nice. So let's see what weapons we got. Okay, so uh, it needs to be purple. And all right, so I got the doomed scythe here. 
which uh, is going to convert yellow gems to doom skulls. That would be a, a good weapon to use. We don't have to use a class for this event. So we could just use all troops like this. But um, yeah, it's not, not bad here. Um, so the thing is, what we could do is we could use something like the Reflection of Good just so we can uh, uh, like enchant and generate some mana for, through explosions. And we could just leave the troops to do all of the uh, creating skulls. I might actually go with something like that. So if we do class, we could do the arch mega's class. We could do a banner that is, let's go double purple green since we got the wild queen. Uh, and Azirus is at the low here, but Azirus will give a bonus to purple. We got uh, Arch Magus, which would give us two bonus to purple. And then we got a banner. So whatever purple we grab is going to be a lot. It's going to be great. Um, so let's, uh, yeah, let's see. We got a negative on red on that banner. So Azirus is going to be kind of uh, lagging behind a little bit in the mana generation, but uh, such a low mana cost, I don't think it's going to affect us too much. Plus, we got this enchant. Uh, and it, we got the potion of enchantment and explosion here. So, but this is what I was talking about with Azirus. Uh, where once it's powered up, you got these two skulls here and here. All you could do is just convert that. You got a nice little skull match. It's beautiful. All right. So, now we got this. We can do this. Well, skull match. Yeah, so, you know, I'll probably go with some team like this for a while, but honestly, I don't think anybody's going to have too much trouble this event uh, coming up with a team because you got Elder Father, you got Nimue, you got Divinish Bala, like, you got the Wild Queen, you got Aziris in here. There's so many good troops that you could use for this event. Yeah, so it's uh, I like that. Well, I like that they actually gave us uh, a lot of skull troops to work with, uh, with having that metal just being 160% extra skull damage. I like that. They're it looks like they're finally starting to think a little bit about <laughs> some of these events. Oh wow! Well. Got in a few uh, skulls there itself, but yeah, we use the zeros down here again. There we go. So yeah, I would say uh, some team like this, Azirus is definitely going to be useful for this type of event. Um, if you don't have it, I would suggest trying to get it at some point. Uh, yeah, I could use Azirus here again. Boom. Love that guy. Works great for events like this. So, yeah, basically uh, some kind of team like that. I mean, I, I like having the Reflection of Good in here for uh, in this team because there's so many troops that can create skulls for this event that it's kind of nice to have a mana generator. And we're restricted to purple, and I think this is going to be one of the best uh, mana generators for the purple color here for this event. You can get this weapon by, uh, I believe it's the class weapon for the Arch Magus class. It grants all status effects to an ally, then explodes 19 gems of their mana color. It's, it's really, really good. Um, so, yeah, I definitely would recommend uh, leveling up that class enough. You gotta, you gotta win 250 battles in order to get that weapon while you have that class equipped, but it's worth it for weapons like that. Yeah, we use some Wild Queen here. And uh, can use a Xerus here real quick. Got a skull connection there. And then uh, we can finish this guy off with using Divinish Bala, convert that red to skulls. Beautiful. 
All right, well, that's uh, that's pretty much all I have for you guys here for this event. Uh, we have about three and a half days, and we'll have sieges that start this week. So uh, if I have time when that event starts, I'll also do a video showing you uh, what kind of team that we can make for that. Otherwise, that's uh, basically all I got for you in this week's Soul Forge video. I, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate all of you watching my videos, and I'll catch you on the next one. Later.